everyone, my name is Miles and I serve here on our media team here at Revitalized Church. Now we're so excited that you're able to join us for today's service. Now before we continue on with any more of this service, there's a few things happening around the church. Now here at Revitalized Church, our hope is to give you a place where you can experience a fresh, enjoyable connection to God and a community of people to do life with. Now, as your church family, we want to stay connected with you and most importantly, be able to pray for your specific needs. Now, the best way we can stay in touch is through what we call our connection card. Now, if you're joining us for our in-person service, you can find the connection cards in your seat back pockets or for a digital option, you can scan the QR code on your screen. Now, we are honored to be a part of your church family and look forward to connecting with you. Hey guys, we want to thank you so much for your faithfulness and your generosity. We want to let you know that you can now give directly to Revitalize Church. And with that, we have our new online giving platform. Now, to give online, simply go to revitalizechurch.life and click on Give or scan the QR code on the screen. If you'd like to set up reoccurring giving, you can do that as well. Now, let me take a moment to pray over our tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. We thank you, Lord, that you are our provider. We pray that you provide every single one of our needs, Lord, according to your riches and glory, whatever that may be, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you bless both the giver and what is given right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey y'all, if you're interested in leading a small group this fall, go ahead and join us for a brief small group interest meeting today right after service. Now, we'll give a brief overview of what it looks like to lead a small group and answer any questions that you may have. Again, that's today right after service. Hey guys, go ahead and join us next week for our potluck style Sunday fun day happening at 12.30 after service next week week. That is Sunday the 25th. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a great time. Invite your friends, invite your family, invite anyone that you know to join us for this awesome Sunday fun day happening next week. We'll see you guys there. Well, it's all the announcements that we have for you guys. If you have any questions or like more information about what's happening here, head over to revitalizechurch.life. Now let's go ahead and continue on with more of the service. Well, hey, everyone. Good to be with you today. Welcome to week number two of this series called Our Church that we just started last week. And uh, in case you weren't here, let me just kind of give you a little brief overview of what we're doing in this series. Really, we're, we're talking about the values of Revitalized Church. You know, we just launched out just a few months ago and we've planted Praise God and we're still moving forward. And God's speaking to us, showing some vision to us that I, I look forward to sharing and really hopefully just a couple of within the next couple of months or so. Uh, as we get some details nailed down. But before we fully get into vision and we talk about all the great things that we think that God is calling us and telling us that He wants to do in us and through us, we really feel like the Lord is wanting to establish a healthy, great, life-giving culture uh, for our church. You know, it's not always about the stuff that you do. So much of life and really what pleases the Lord is the kind of people that we are. Like, like do, are we the people that God wants us to be? Are we reflecting His love are, are we honoring Him and are we honoring people? And so last week we started this series with a title message called Our Church Loves God. And we, we actually saw something that Jesus said about the fact that the most important commandment, the most important thing that we can do that God has ever said, you read in the Bible, Jesus said it over and over and over again, was that we love God with everything that we have. In other words, that we're passionate about Him. We have moments and times of encounter. I'm not going to get into all the details. You can go back and listen to that message at another time if you missed it or you want to hear it again. But today I want to get into really the second part of these core values. And here's what it is. You ready? You may have already seen it on the screen, but, but here you go. If you're taking notes, here's what our second core value, and it's this. Our church loves people. Can you say it with me? Just come on. Our church loves people people. And before we start talking about the how, I want to show you a few things. I actually just want to walk you through a few things in Scripture about the importance of loving people and uh, what, what Jesus said about it. In fact, 
Let me, let me just read a couple of things about what Jesus said about loving people. And I'm going to start actually where we, where we started last, last week, actually, when we kicked off this whole series, when Jesus was talking about loving God with everything that we have. He didn't stop there, actually. And let me, let me just let me reread that opening passage from Mark chapter 12, verse 29. But I'm going to finish the sentence because Jesus wasn't done talking uh, but I purposefully waited because I wanted us to see the two together this week after we established the fact that really we, we, we are called, we need to. It's in our best interest to love God with everything that we have. And here's what Jesus said in Mark chapter 12 after some people asked Jesus what the most important thing was uh, that we could do. What's the most important commandment? And here's what he said. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And the second is equally important. Listen to this. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says this. This is, this is really strong. He says, no other commandment is greater than these. You know, I think one of the things that trips us up as Christians, people that are trying to follow Jesus with everything that we have, trying to honor him, is we start putting all these rules on us. Like religion actually puts a bunch of rules, a bunch of regulations on us. And I love, I love the heart of Jesus. Really, I love the, he expresses the heart of the Father. But he comes in and he says, let's keep it real simple, okay? I, li I like to say this thing around the house. People laugh sometimes. But I, I like to say, keep it simple, keep it safe, right? Let's keep things simple. Let's keep it real clear. And Jesus was actually really clear that we don't have to be focused on doing a whole bunch of other stuff, not a bunch of yeses and no's, a bunch of don't do this and you better do this or else. In fact, he just said, listen, if you will love God with everything that you have, and then if you will love people as yourself, like in other words, like, like the way that you would care for yourself, the way that you would look out for, your, look out for other people that way, then you, you got it. Like you'll fulfill all the commandments. You'll fulfill all the, we could stop right there, but we won't. Okay. Don't you worry. I know you want to keep listening. All right. You can, yeah, I, maybe you don't, maybe you do. I can't tell if you're laughing because I'm not there. Okay. So there you go. But, but this is what Jesus said. He said, there's no greater commandment than, than these two. In fact, he goes on in another, in another passage when it's talking about this, he actually says it kind of like this. He actually says that on, on these two, the whole law hangs. And, and so in other words, you get these two right and everything else will come into alignment. And we're going to go on over the next few weeks with talking about more core values. But let me just stop and say this. If we would just focus on these two things, loving God with everything that we have and loving people, in other words, not being consumed about ourselves, but really looking out and preferring other people, then all these other core values that we're going to talk about will come really easily, actually, I, I think. But I want to I show you a few other things that Jesus said, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through them a little fast because I, I have a few other things I want to I say today. In John chapter 13, this is what Jesus said in verse 34. Amen. Okay, here we go. What is this going to be? Love each other. It's real simple, right? We kind of make this thing complicated. Love each other, and here's how. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. And then verse 35, he says, your love for one another, check this out, will prove to the world that you're my disciples. I, I think there's a whole bunch of people in the world trying to figure out who the real God is. I think there's a bunch of people in this world that are seeking and searching and they're looking for hope. They're looking for life. Listen, they're looking for joy. They're looking to the church. I think they're looking to people that call themselves Christians and they're wanting to see do we reflect or do we give an example of the stories that they've heard about? And the question I, I want to ask us, maybe we can pose it to ourselves. We don't have to say anything to anybody around you. But are we really loving each other? Are we loving people the same way that Jesus loved us? He gave his whole life for us. He, did, he didn't come to be served. He said, he, he said I came to serve. Are, are we living our life in a way where it's not all about us? but it's actually all about the people around us. Here's another thing that Jesus said. In John 15, he said this, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. There's no greater love than this, than, than to, to give up your life, to give up your, your preferences, to give up all of your wants. It's not all about me, 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 me when we get together. Let me, let me just tell you, a whole lot of marriages, a whole lot of family units, 
would actually become healed and whole if every person in that family actually took the lead on this and said, you know what, I'm going I'm to lay down my life for my family. I'm going to lay down my life for my spouse. I'm going to lay down my life for my kids, or I'm going to lay down my life for my parents. Come on, somebody. Right? I'm going to lay down my life for my neighbors. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do some things that's not just all about me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do some things that's about other people. What would happen if we came into our church and and we weren't coming just for me, like just for us, so that we could get something out of it. But we were actually coming saying, man, I want to come. I want to bless somebody. I wonder what the atmosphere would be like. You know, we already have a great church, but I just wonder how much better things could actually be. And so Jesus, that's what Jesus said. But I want to do this. I want to, I want to give you even a greater perspective when we start talking about loving people. It actually comes from 1 Peter chapter 4. And listen to what Peter said. He said this. In chapter 4, verse 7, he says, the end of all things is at hand. You know, a lot of people are asking, is this the end of the world? Well, let me just tell you this. I, I don't know if it's the end times, right? Like, like if Jesus is going to come back tomorrow, I think we're close. But I'll just say this. You only have one life to live. So you could say it like this. These are your last days, right? These are our end times because after this life, we don't have any, anything else after this on this earth. We're either going to go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. And that's, that's between you and Jesus, okay? But, but we have this one life to live. And we have, some of us, we have kids and such. Listen, we're, 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 we're not living just for right now. And, and so we, we've got to have this greater perspective, Peter says. He says, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. So in other words, let's have eternity in our hearts. Like, let, like let's think about the bigger picture rather than just what we're going to eat after church today. Right? Let, let's think about how, 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 are, how are the way that we're living going to impact not only our eternity, but others' eternities. And he goes on and he says this, And above all things, have fervent love for one another. This word fervent, it's, a, it's like a, a stretched out love. Like, like you've gone beyond yourself. It, it, to, to the point, like it's this deep love where, where it's actually maybe even a little uncon, inconvenient, but, but it's for other people. And so he says, have this, have this stretched out, this fervent, this even inconvenient at times love for one another. And he says this, for love will cover a multitude of sins. This is, this is powerful, y'all. Let me, let, me let me just tell you, when we, when we love the way that the Bible says to love, the way that Jesus said to love, the way that the Apostle Peter says to love, here's what happens. People are able to be in an environment where they can actually receive the love of God. L listen to this. It, it actually receive His forgiveness. See, we're, we're the representatives of Jesus on this earth, and how we treat each other, how we treat people that have done wrong, people that are in sin, you know, whatever it is, whether they're new to the, to the church or they've been around for long, the way that we treat one another actually reflects and, and plays a major role in how people will actually receive the ministry of Jesus in their life directly, directly from Him. So, so people are able to, to walk in this, to this, this forgiveness. But then here's the other thing. People are able to get hold, whole, and it, it, they're, they're able to get healed because we're covering them. And so they're, they're in these, these safe environments, these, these great environments where, where, they're, where they're in a safe place with, with people that love them and that will cover them and that they can be real and open and honest and talk about the hurts of yesterday and get healed up so that they can walk into their tomorrow with victory and with strength and with healing. And, and, so that, that, and that's what the kind of church that we want to be is that kind, of a, that kind of a people. But he doesn't, doesn't stop there. He, he continues in verse 9. He says, Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God, that in all things, verse 11, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the, dom and the dominion forever and ever Amen. So let me just say this. With eternity in mind, we've got to love people. Okay, We need to have this eternal perspective and not just a right now perspective. And this, this love that we're called to, to have for people, it's not convenient. Like we, we just need to acknowledge it. It's not convenient. man. Every time I go on a vacation, a family vacation, I have to remind myself about a day into it. I got to remind myself about 30 minutes into it. Come on, let's be real, parents. I have to remind myself maybe eight minutes into it that this is not a vacation for me. This is 
family time. This is a time to pour in and to serve and to love my kids, to love my wife. This is a time to do things that's going to bless the whole family, not a time for me to just sit there and everybody takes care of me. A whole bunch of drama gets avoided when, when I get that heart set and that mindset. And I think it's the same way with other people, with friends, with church, at work. I mean, what, in, in every aspect of life, when we would come in, if we can come in and live this, this reality that it's, it's just not about it's not about me. And in fact, I'm going to do some things that I would prefer not to do, but it blesses you. And so I'm going to, I have you in mind. But listen, when we stretch out beyond ourselves, an atmosphere is created. We already said this, but an atmosphere is created for people to find forgiveness, to find healing, and really to find freedom. See, our, our church has to exist for others. It, it, we could say it like this, our church exists for other people. Like when we come in on a Sunday morning, it's not just about us and our preference on everything. Uh, we're actually thinking, and this is, this is my prayer, this is my dream for our church, that we would be a people that when we come in on Sunday mornings and we're, we're serving on Sunday mornings and we're, com we're, we're not coming in thinking about us alone. Like we're not, we're not trying to get the same seat every time, but we're, we're, actually trying to, we're actually trying to help lean in and create an environment that's comfortable for people that have never been here before. People that are far from God and that they're just coming in to check it out and see if, if the stories that they heard, the rumors that they heard were true or not. And that we're ready for them and we love them and we want them. We're not thinking about us for no more, but we're actually thinking about the fact that, that God wants all creation to come back to Him, all humanity to come back to Him, and we get to play a role in that. So we, we can't afford to, to exist for ourselves alone. So I want to share like just three truths for us to consider. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring us home on this. I'm going I'm to land this plane, so to speak. But before I give a little bit of a response of what I, I think would be appropriate for us as a church, and what I'm going to ask us all to, to do and be a part of, here's some truths to consider. Okay, number one, if you're taking notes, you can write this down. We are blessed. Listen, we're, we're blessed to be a blessing. Like, that, that's the reality. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, it says this. This is God speaking. He says, I will bless you, and you will be a blessing to others. The reason that God is blessing us isn't just so that we can have a good, comfortable life or so that we can have peace or that, so that, listen, so that we can say, well, I don't know what's going on on this earth, but I'm going to heaven, so that's all that matters. No, 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 no. He wants to bless us so much so, so that we can turn around and bless other people. Number two, here's the second truth to consider. When we bless others, God takes care of our needs. I think one of the biggest reasons that we get selfish, and I, and I think this is just a pull that we, 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 a tension that we all face, including myself, is that we, we have a hard time blessing others, especially if we're in a spot where maybe we feel a little tight. Maybe we feel a little tapped out. And, and I'm not saying that, that, that God doesn't want to take care of you because he does. But, but let, me, let me just tell you, there's this truth, and I'm going to show you right here in, in, in Luke. In fact, this is something that Jesus said, that, that when we bless others, that God really will take care of our needs. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Jesus said this. He says, give away your life, and you'll find life given back. But not merely given back. It'll be given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. That, that, that's, that's really how, how life works. I can't tell you how many times that I've been tapped out. I've been exhausted. I've been tapped out emotionally or, or maybe even tight financially. And I've given of my time. I've given of my soul, so to speak, my emotion. Right? I've, I've let someone cry on my shoulder when I needed to cry on somebody's shoulder. And how in that interaction and in that change of being generous with what I, just what I have, how all of a sudden there was a fulfillment that took place in me. There, there was, there was a, a renewal that took place in me. And, and here's why, because this is a truth that we need to really consider, I think, and, and that's that when we bless others, when we stretch out that fervent love, that God makes sure that our needs are met too. He's not going to forget about us, okay? You're His child. He loves you. And so He's not trying to have you all messed up and broken just for the sake of everybody else. No, no, no. He cares about you too. doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy all the time but he's going to take care of you too. And here's the third truth for us to consider. And that's this, the more God gives to us, the more he expects us to give to others. The more, let me just say that again, the more God gives to us, 
the more he expects us to give to others. Jesus said it like this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. He said, you've received much, now go on ahead and give much. Like, like you, in, in other words, freely you've received, now freely you go on ahead and give it. So there's an expectation that you're going to pass this on, so to speak. You're going to be generous with what I've given you. The wisdom, the knowledge. Hey, can I just say something? Older men, older women, guess what? There's a generation that needs your wisdom. Even if we're looking at you kind of funny, I consider myself in that younger generation, okay? And, and some of you are laughing. That's fine. God bless you too, okay? And, 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 but, but I'm just saying, you old, the older generation, we need, we need your wisdom passed down. We, we need your knowledge passed down. Come on, parents that have already raised some of the... We, parents that have young kids, we need the wisdom and the knowledge and the encouragement to say it's going to get better or slow it down. We, we, need, we need that. You know, maybe God's given you a, a, a gift of hospitality, a gift of serving, a, I don't know, a gift for cleaning, a gift for a grace for fixing things. I, I don't know the, the gift, maybe for speaking, for leading. Let me just ask you, what are you doing with it? Are you holding it all to yourself and using it just for your own personal gain? Or are you thinking about other people? Are we thinking about other people? What, what has God I'll tell you something that God's given, given to each and every one of us. If you've given your life to Jesus, He's, he's given us salvation. He, he gave us the way to e eternal salvation. Could we give that? Like, could we share that with other people even when it's inconvenient? See, when, when, when we gather together, when we come, we, we, we got we to gotta take off the selfishness. And, and, and again, I said it already, but I, I know there's a, there's a tension Okay, I, I, I literally, sitting here right now, recording this, I feel the tension on the inside. Okay, there's other things that I, I, I want to do. There's preferences that I have. I wasn't planning on being a senior pastor. I, I, I really like doing other things where I didn't have to have responsibilities that I have now and some other things that come along. It's a joy to serve God, let me just tell you that. But, but I'm just telling you, my preference was to be the number two guy, maybe the number three, okay? Because the number three, I can get away with a little bit more stuff. I'm just joking with you. But, but I'm just telling you, I, I, I really liked being a number two. I really enjoyed just being a support piece. But when the Lord spoke to me about coming to Kalamazoo, when he spoke to me about us launching this church out and, and doing some things that were maybe a little uncomfortable, let me just say, very uncomfortable, I, 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 had to, I, had to, I had to stop thinking about myself. And, and I, here, here's what I actually did. I, I actually thought about you. I thought about the people that I haven't met yet. I, I started walking around Kalamazoo and I started going to the stores and I started going to the mall and I started going to the restaurants and I started seeing people and you know what I saw? I started seeing hurt and pain and brokenness, frustration, despair. I, I just started seeing people where they were, and it was like God gave me the supernatural love for people. And, and, and here's what I did. I, I asked them for it. I said, God, would you make me love people? Help, help me. Give me a heart for people because I, I don't, I don't want to give more than what I, I need to, more than what I, I feel like I should but this is the kind of love that God's calling all of us to, to, to live. And, and I really think that, that God wants our church to be that kind of a church where we're not thinking about ourselves, but we're actually thinking about other people. We're excited when we see new faces and we have to maybe go out into the lobby for, for overflow because we can't sit in our normal seat. Or maybe we sit up further and closer in the church so that a new visitor, a new person that doesn't want to be spotlighted in the very front row can kind of get a seat in the back. I, I, I'm, maybe that's some of you. I, I, I don't know. But, but maybe, just maybe, the Lord's speaking to you just like He's spoken to me about just stretching out just a little bit more and, and existing for others. And so that these, these are some truths to, to consider. But I, I want to kind of turn the corner here and, and just ask this question. What does God want us to do? Like, like with considering these truths, okay, considering what Jesus said, this looking at it from a greater perspective with eternity on our minds, what, what does God actually want us to do? And I, I actually think Jesus was really clear, and it's found in the Great Commission. So these, these are like Jesus' parting words, right? And, and how many of you know when it's someone's last words, they're not going to see you for a long time, or for some people as they've gone to gone, gone to, to be with the Lord, they, they, there's these last moments, these last words, and so often those are the most precious, most important words. And I think Jesus gave us the, 
the most important words, the, the, the final charge, so to speak. And by the way, he gave us everything we needed to fulfill it. And we'll talk about that another time. But we, we call it the Great Commission, and, and it can be summed up like this. Go. <laughs> Go and tell everybody, tell everybody about me. Make disciples of every single person, not just your own people that look just like you and act just like you, but, but come on, open your life up to other people. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing in my own words here. And make disciples of everybody. Tell them about me. Help them to live the same kind of life and receive the salvation that, that, that you received. And I, I actually, when you read through the whole New Testament, I, I've actually found it even in the Old Testament, but I, I actually think this, that the, the Great Commission is found in several other places throughout the New Testament. And I, I want to actually read it, not from Jesus' words alone, but from the Apostle Paul in the book of Colossians. I really like this version of the Great Commission in a sense. I, I, I think it's, it's, it, it speaks really well. I, I get it, and I hopefully it, it, you get it too, you catch it. Here's what Paul says. And he really says the same thing that Jesus, but he really, he's taken the Great Commission and he's, he's, he, he's reiterating it. He's, 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 he's echoing it. And he says this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. He says, so we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. And then he says this, that's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. I think, I think there's, there's four things that we see in here, and, and really this even goes along with, with why our church even exists. This is part of our mission. This is our, by the way, our church is centered around the Great Commission. And really, I think every church ought to be because that was the mission that Jesus sent every believer on, which is what I'm talking about here. But in these next couple of minutes, I just I want to share four things, four things that as a church we're going to do. And I'm asking all of us to be a part. Like, like if you call Revitalized Church your, your church, would you, would you partner with us? Because it's not just for a couple of people to do. Listen, listen, if we're going to reach our community, if we're going to revitalize our community, if we're going to help people find freedom and, and know Jesus, receive salvation, if we're going to help people discover who they are and, and actually fulfill the plan of God in their life, it's, it's going to require a whole lot more than me. You don't, let me just tell you, you don't want it to depend on me and me alone. That's not actually even how God designed it. We're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks too. But, but let, me just, let me just give these four things and then, and then uh, we'll, we'll conclude this message here. And here's the first thing that, that we see out of this. And it's, it's this, we reach people. Like we, we need to reach them. In Luke chapter 14, verse 23, it says this, So his master said, Go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. That Jesus is telling a story here about someone, about this master who's, who's actually trying to put on a banquet. And, and, and people haven't, haven't been coming. They haven't been invited. And so he, he, actually, he actually tells his servants, and he, and he says, go out and go everywhere you can. Go out. Some, some translation says, go out to the highways and the byways. Go out to the gutters. I mean, go, go everywhere. Not just, the, not just the people that are prim and proper, but, but go to the lowest of the low. Come on, the people that seem like they're the furthest away. And he says, go out to them, and here's what I want you to do, and urge them, like reach out to them, urge anyone you find to come. And he says this, so that the house will be full. Let me just say, I, I, I believe that our church is supposed to grow. I think our church is supposed to reach more and more people, more and more families. That's why we're doing all kinds of stuff right now, and we've been sharing uh, with you for the last couple of weeks things that we're doing to stretch out to make more space, it's inconvenient for us. It's it, going to be a little bit harder on some things. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually create space, create rooms, create times for people to actually come and actually meet God. And, and here's why. So that God's house will be full. When, when will it be enough until Jesus comes back? Uh, this church exists to reach people for Jesus, like to find people, to reach people that are far from God and, and help them get close to God. That, that's why we exist, y'all. I'm just letting you know. And, 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 and I know that the tension is there, but, but this is a church where, where we're, we're active in our partnership with Jesus, and it's because we love 
people. We love, come on, can you just say it? Say, I love people. Just, just say it. You might need to just say it a few. Some of you are having a hard time saying it, I would imagine right now, because you, maybe you never said those words, okay? I, don't, I used to not say those words a lot, too. Sometimes you just got to get it out of our mouth. Come on, everybody with me. One, two, three. I love people. There you go. Awesome. We love our church loves people. We exist for other people. Here's what it says in Romans chapter 2, verse 4. God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. Listen, how does he show his kindness? Through us. That, that's how he shows his kindness. That's how, how he shows his love. When, they walk, when people walk into our, 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 our church, if they come into our homes, when they come into our homes, when we're having small groups and we've never met them before, they look a little different, they act a little different, they don't know our norms, so to speak, right? They're, they don't know our core values. We're not going to get on them and say, hey, now, you're not acting, you're, you're not acting the way that our, you're not, you're not showing our value. We're not going to do that, okay? We're, we're going we're gonna to create an environment where, where lost people, where people that are far from God, people that maybe used to know Jesus, used to be in a relationship with Jesus, and for whatever reason, and they walked away, where it's easy for them to find Him with us. And, and we get to show the kindness of God. And let me just tell you, if you're sitting here today, and you're far from God, let me, let me just tell you, if no one has told you this in a long time or ever, God loves you no matter what. And I love you too, and I can't wait to meet you one day. Okay, let me just tell you, God loves you, and so do we. Okay, we love people. Here's number two. Here's the second thing. We need to warn them. We see Paul say that in Colossians, but we actually need to warn people. Let me just tell you that we're, we're, we're going to speak the truth, but we, we need to speak the truth in love. But listen to what Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17 says. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Now, now how do you do this? Right? Because there, there's a lot of people out there that, God bless them, they... they they want to just let everybody know what they're doing wrong. And, and I, think, I think it's appropriate. A friend does tell the truth, but we also need to know when and where and how to do it. The Bible says to speak the truth in love, right? To season your tongue, your words with grace. And so I, I think we need to be asking ourselves this, but let me just say that this is partly why we're launching small groups really in just a few weeks. October 9th, we're launching small groups and uh, every, let me, everyone needs to be in a small group. If you feel called, just, just ask God, should I lead a small group? But, but we're believing that our church is going to be full of small groups. In fact, I've been, I've been saying this phrase to some of our leaders, and I, I just want to adopt it and have, have us all just recognize this, that our church is a church of small groups. Like, we're made up of small groups. We're not a church that just has them. And so this church exists as a, as, a, as, a, as a bunch of small groups. Does that make sense? I, I, hope, I hope I'm saying that clearly enough. But here's what needs to happen in those small groups is when we can get more, more intimate, is when we can get a little bit more real, maybe a little bit more raw. Listen, when we create these safe spaces where we love people, where we're being hospitable for people, where, where, where we're, we're coming and hanging out in a smaller setting week after week after week after week after week for our, during our small group semesters, and then all of a sudden, because, repu because, because friendship and relationship has been formed, we're able to come up and say, hey, you, you shouldn't talk to your wife like that. Or, or hey, you, you know, I, I don't think that's the best way to go about that situation. And we can sharpen one another. We, we, can, we can help one another grow. As, a, as, as iron sharpens iron, a friend sharpens a friend. And so we all need to be a part of small groups. Jump in. I'm going to I'm going to be leading a small group and I'm probably going to be a part of a small group and and we're 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 going hard after this, but this is our, as we're laying the foundation of our church. We're putting it right off the bat that we're a church of small groups. In fact, you just see it all throughout the New Testament in the book of Acts chapter 2. Even you see that this is how the church was built. I think this was God's original design for His church, that we would be uh, maybe a large gatherings, but that these large gatherings wouldn't be it, that we would be made up of smaller gatherings, smaller groups. And so th this, this is who we are. This is who we want to be. Be a part of it. Right after church today, there's an interest meeting. Uh, jump in that. Be a part of it. And then here's number three. We need to teach them. Paul says we got, we got to teach them, right, with the wisdom of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 says, says this. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service. So that the body, here's why, so that the body of Christ may be built up. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Let me just announce something, let you all know. 
that we're actually, it's, we, haven't, we haven't launched it yet because we're actually working on all the details of this because we want to get this in front of the church well. But, but I mean, based off this passage, I, I strongly believe, I really believe that, that my job is not to do all the ministry, right? Anyone that's on a platform in our, in our church, that, that is not the whole ministry, okay? There, there are gifts and graces that are listed all throughout the Bible. And here's the job of someone like me, of a pastor. My job is to equip you, the saints, for the work of the ministry. In other words, the bulk of the ministry that happens in our community, the bulk of the ministry that happens in our church, actually isn't supposed to come from me or the pastors. It's actually supposed to come from you. God has put amazing things in you. My job is to train, to equip, to empower you. And so coming in the, in the early part of 2023, we're going to be launching what we're calling Growth Track. And here's what this is. Growth Track is, is actually going to be our process, our way of helping you to really to connect to the church, but also to discover how God has uniquely designed you, created you to see all the gifts that he's put inside of you. And then we're going to we want to help and partner with you to to get you on a ministry team, to be a part of our team and, and to really to do all that all that God has called you to do so that you can fulfill the plan of God in your life. Just like our church says, be revitalized so that we can go revitalize. In other words, receive the ministry of Jesus so that we can go and give the ministry of Jesus. And so be on the lookout for that. We're going to be putting some dates out sometime soon. And uh, if you, in fact, if you'd like to be a part of putting that together, just sign up on your Connect card today. And I'd love to have you on the team as we uh, get this thing going. But that's coming pretty soon. And here's number four. And I'm going to wrap up with this. And here's what, here's what it says. Here, here, here's, here's the second part. Help them. Here's what we do. We help them fulfill their purpose. And this is kind of, kind of part of, of, of what I'm saying with the growth track. But that, actually, this is beyond the growth track. And this is, we want everybody to be a part of this. I mean, everybody is called to this part. Uh, and and here's, here's what we see in Ephesians chapter 2. And this is what God says about you. This is what he says about me. This is what he says about us in his Bible. He says this, we are his workmanship. You just, you just need to say to yourself right now to say, I am God's workmanship. I mean, another translation says you're his masterpiece. Like you're, you're his work of art. You're his handiwork. I love the psalm that says, the psalmist that says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God, God has designed all my inward parts. And before anybody ever, listen, before my mama even knew I was in her belly, God was designing me and taking, I mean, I'm, God, has, God has you on his mind and he created you the way you're supposed to be. There is nothing wrong with you. You just need to know that, okay? I want you to know, there's nothing wrong with you. God set you up. He designed you perfectly, okay? But it says this, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. You were designed not for bad stuff, okay? You were designed, it's inside of you, okay? This, this is inside of you when you gave your life to Jesus to be able to do good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should just walk in them. God's already done all the hard stuff. He's just saying, just get into a position and so that you can just start walking in this. And, and so here's what I invite everybody to do, and that's to do this. Join the team. Be a part of the ministry that's going on here. You know, you've heard probably today, but you've been hearing about us stretching out to kids. Listen, if you have a heart for kids, this, if, if you can do administration, if you can help check people in, if you can clean, if you can play an instrument, come on, if you can do behind the scenes, whatever it is, maybe you do mailers, I, I don't know, administer, whatever gifts and graces you have, wherever you see a need in the church and you feel like you can, you can fill that, here's what I invite you to do right now. Fill, just fill that out on the connection card. Just write it out. Like, I want to help with, and then you just fill in the blank. But we want to invite everybody to be a part of the team here. And here's something that we're doing that we, we haven't done yet, but we're really excited about this, and we're believing that this is going to actually be something that we do on a routine basis. And we're going to have an all-team night coming up at the end of October. On October 23rd, it's going to be a party. We're going to have a good old time. We're going to share some more values. We're going to share some more heart in the soul of our church. Share some, listen, if you're on the team, you get to hear the vision before everybody else gets the vision of the church. So just even if you're one of those people where you're just like, just tell me first, just come to the heart and soul night. Okay, come to our all team night and you're going you're gonna to hear all that stuff. We're going to have some good food. I'm praying in the name of Jesus. Man, it'd be nice to have some tacos or something. I don't know what we'll have, but we haven't talked about all that. But let, let me just tell you, we're inviting you. This is a church where everybody has a part to play. Everyone can make a difference with us. Everyone can be a part of revitalizing people. Everyone can be a part of helping people come to know Jesus. Wouldn't that be amazing if we had a church that existed for others 
we came and we were excited about Sunday mornings and maybe our other larger gatherings because we just knew that we were going to minister and reach other people. And wouldn't it be amazing if we also knew that we had another place during the week and we didn't just have a once a week thing, but we had another group of people, smaller group of people that we could get with and be in relationship with and do life with and find freedom, find healing and be discipled and grow in life together. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be good? And if, if everybody just had a place and everybody was served, I, I don't think anybody would be left out. So here's what I want to do. And we're going to close here. I want us to, to ask God to help us be a people that exist for others, that God would help us to, to love fervently, that we would be stretched out toward other people. So come on, let's do this right now. Let's, let's pray. And then we're going to let you out of here in just a little bit. Let's, let's, let's do this. Father, we thank you so much for what you're speaking to us and what you're depositing into our church. And God, I really believe that you're, you're speaking to us and telling us that a core essential value, a part of our culture, a part of our community, this church, something that would please you, that would glorify you, and that would bless others in a mighty way would be if we just put it in our posture that we exist for others, that it's, it's not all about us, but it's, it's actually about each other. It's about others. And so would you deposit inside of us a supernatural love for people? And Lord, as we extend out, as we love fervently, as we commit to taking this value and really adopting it into our personal lives, not just on Sundays, but at our jobs, at our schools, and our families, and our neighborhoods, wherever we might go, at the store, God, that people would be blessed and sins would be really covered, that, that they would find you, that we would be a great reflection of you, and that people would come to know you, people would get healed and restored and whole. Lord, bless, bless your people today, and may we be filled with your love overflowing, and may those around us feel your love through us. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.